Welcome, everybody. I am very excited. We have never done this before. We have a three-way podcast here with two of my favorites, Ken Hardison with the law firm Grow Podcast. We have Alex Valencia from the We Do Marketing Hour. Uh, it is it is great to have you both here, uh, and uh, you know we're traveling the country to all these great thought leadership forums, and all we hear about is AI. AI, 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 yeah. and it is clearly here. I think it's one of those moments that you know what the cab industry thought when when uh, when Uber came. Uber. Well, it's it's going to be different. We don't know how, uh, but I, I think the landscape in a couple of years will be significantly different. Uh, Ken, I know you've been giving a lot of thought to this, you know, and you speak to lawyers from around the country. How are you seeing AI impact things short term? And where do you think we're going? That's what we'll be talking about here for, for our time together. Yeah. yeah, I think short term, you're going to see lawyers trying to figure out how to use it for marketing. But I think long term, it's going to be used in every aspect of the business, in the management of the files, in contacting clients, in, in doing demands, and in litigation, handling discovery, depot prep. I mean, it's going to be... It's just so many ways it's going to be used. And and my my fear is, is that a lot of lawyers are going to stick their head in the sand uh, like they did when the website stuff came out. And, and the ones that took advantage of it killed it for years. And then it took the other ones years to catch up. But, uh, you know, we'll see. We'll see where it goes. I mean, you know, but I, I think it's uh, the biggest thing since the printing press. I mean, I mean, it's just, it's, it's huge. It's definitely huge. It's not, and yeah. We've heard this before, right? We saw this on the metaverse where we all going to be having law firms there. And I kind of took a little bit of a back. Right, I was weird. like, I didn't see people going there. I was going to wait to that. Uh, Peter Shankman, who'll be speaking at the uh, super summit. Um, you know, he, he had places there for the last 10 years, bought all of times square in one of these places. You know, to me, the question is we are already using AI. Right. It's already yeah. auto filling our suggestions on Google. It's already being used by Google to figure out what you want. You know, Alex, I mean, content sort of the epicenter of the AI explosion given ChatGBT. And you and I have talked about this before, but talk to me about like at you're an innovative company. We've talked already about the fact that this is not stop writing content, use use ChatGBT. But how are you guys leveraging AI within a, a content first environment? Um, so we're still looking at it from the perspective of HI as opposed to AI, like human intelligence as opposed to fully artificial intelligence, but we are using and embracing it, right? Like, just like you said, we don't want to be the taxi cabs to Uber. We don't want to be the blockbuster to Netflix. And I don't feel like that, that that's the situation. I think there's still a lot of work there. We're experimenting. We put a whole team aside of associate editors and senior editors just to work on the AI. So we're really trying to figure out the prompts on how it really understands. I think the goal here is for anyone and future employees for people in any industry is how do you learn to manipulate this and learn how to speak to it as in prompts? When we started back in the internet, back in 99, remember when you had to do a search, it was hashtag something or quotes something right to prompt google to give you the exact information you have and eventually became smarter and smarter and smarter and you didn't have to use those prompts we just went directly into keywords so i think we're going in the same way is how do i talk to this robot to give me the information i want it's still too early to have all of the information that's out on the internet like um uh, one of the biggest databases that it pulls from is reddit right how much BS information is on Reddit and how much good is on there, right? And that's the issue. There's is, a, there's a, but if that's, you know, that's a pretty, and look, we saw stuff and where- it's good info it, though, it's it, great. Even though, it, you know, there are points where depending on its its, in, its inventory of information, it didn't know what COVID was. Because if it didn't, if it wasn't 2020, it was 19, 2019 and before, it wouldn't even have it. Obviously that will catch up over time. Um, one of the things I find fascinating you know, having spoken to some of the inner people at Google, right? Because Google's not first mover on this. It's an unusual place for us in the last 20 years where Google is not first and foremost. In fact, they've kind of laid an egg. I have no doubt it'll catch up. But Bing, and with their investment, has sort of jumped everybody else. 
Um, you know, what are your thoughts given that we have been in a Google first environment? I mean, Ken's entire ecosystem of law firms and marketers has been Google first. All of a sudden, you know, Microsoft comes in with a differentiator. Is that something that will hold or is this something that is, hey, they got there first, but everybody else will catch up soon? I think it's a catch up game. I think Google, I mean, I think Microsoft being is still one of those where you look at it and you're like, is that really going to be my first search spot? I think what I've seen already, even at our latest conference or any conversation with lawyers that are using it, right? Because that's the world we're in. We're in the legal world, whether it's us marketers or lawyers within that whole space is just using the app for fun, right? Right now, people are like, hey, how can I send an amazing text message, create a stupid song? Or uh, some of the really smart attorneys are like, how can I get this to create a demand letter? Right. How can I use it for that? And you and like Ken touched on is I think a lot of them are looking at it. How can I use for marketing? Amazing for emails. Um, you know, why spend time trying to generate an intelligent email? Right. Even from a marketer standpoint, like, what do I want to say to this guy? This is who I'm speaking to. This is what I want to say. Do it. So I wrote my own and then and put the information prompts from ChatGPT. It wasn't exactly how I would have said it. But then I told it combine mine and this one and it was fucking amazing like it was and that's that, that's what i'm you can this is what i'm chomping at the bit for you know one of the things that uh, that blue shark did and bryce Bennett did early on was trying to get verbiage directly from lawyers as a process right you get it you got to transcribe it we didn't at the time find a transcription service that was good enough ai is getting better and better and then the idea is if you can take rougher content as opposed, you know, and get help cleaning it up to the point where the underlying bones are the intelligence of the lawyers and that you then could produce their words. Because if you just took their words without cleaning it up and the cleanup cost could, ex you know, exceed the cost of producing content through an Alex or others, then you're at a point where, okay, I can start getting the words of a Ken Hardison out of him and onto the web page in a crawlable format. To me, that's a short-term game changer that we're working on. I can't tell you it's fully there, but it's out there whether or not we harness it right to the next question. Yeah. You know, Ken, what are you thinking? No, yeah, I, I agree. I mean, listen, we, everybody talks about chat, GPT-4 and all that, but there's so many other apps out there. Lavender helps you with emails. Uh, then you got, you know, the Dolly, which is still in its embassy and still got some bugs in it. But uh, like, here's something I'm doing right now. I mean, we've gone out and we're finding a company and uh, I'm going to get in front of a camera for about 15, 20 minutes and read a bunch of scripts and do the certain mannerisms. They're creating an avatar for me. So you'll be, it'll be me, but it's not me. Okay. It'll be, uh, it, I'm, I'm going to really want to explore and, and play with it and test it on like even social media. Wouldn't it be nice if I could just do a bunch of social media that looks like me, but it's not me. And I don't hey, have right. to. Well, worry that, about well that's your it. dream. I mean, Ken, you, if you could just be sitting in Key West. And yes. That, I mean, that's, that's, that's my lifestyle. I, I, I told him, I said, I got to have it before summit because I'm going to, I'm going to show it to everybody down there. And this is what you can do. And if it's good, then it's good. If it's not good, then they can see, but. But I really and 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 for two thousand dollars a year, I can get forty minutes of video a month. I mean, we we went out and searched. My people went out and searched everywhere. No, I think it's a game changer. I mean, I, I do, but I think that I, I, I feel like we're just in like what what Alex was saying. We're just in the infancy of it, where it's going to just get you know, uh, and then you, I just I think there's ways we're going to use it that nobody's even thought about. I mean, I Absolutely. really, I really do. I think, uh, I think it's it's going to go faster. I mean, you look at it: over a hundred million users in less than three months. That's the difference between that and the uh, metaverse. And nobody's put t Microsoft didn't put ten billion dollars in the metaverse. I can tell you that. That's yeah, why. You know, to be, to be fair, Facebook did. You know, Facebook did. People, people did put money there. Um, but as you're saying, there weren't 100 million people playing in it. Yeah, and that, that fast. 
I mean, it's just so, it's going so fast. Well, let me ask you, we got a Pilma Super Summit coming up. Very excited back in New Orleans, beautiful venue. Um, it sounds like you have this, uh, you know, you're, you're going to have a fair amount with talking about AI, chat, GBT, et cetera. Tell us a little yeah. bit about what's going on there. Yeah. So, uh, well, first of all, we got uh, it's May 16th through the 18th down in Ritz Carlton. We got room block, uh, really reasonable rooms. I think they're less than, I don't even know what they are, but I know they're, they're, lot, they're like half price of what you usually get them for. And uh, we got the whole hotel. Oh, wow. Nobody, yeah, we, we booked the whole hotel. Nobody else is going to be there. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, and uh, we, we expect to sell out. We got about 50 vendors there. We, we limit it to 50. Uh, but uh, yeah, we got we got one of your good friends, Seth, uh, Peter Shankman, who is a futurist, who is a guy that sees things before they happen. Uh, great marketer. Uh, we've got. Uh, uh, Cameron, what's his last name? You know it better. Harold. Harold. Cameron Harold. Oh, yeah. yeah. I didn't know he was coming. Yeah. Yeah. He's going to be speaking. And uh, you know you what know, he does in addition? I hate to take it away from the AI theme, but what I think he's genius, obviously, with the COO of 1 800 Got Junk. And uh, not only is he a great coach, but he has a thing that's not law firm specific at all. But I think everybody in the law firm space is dancing around this space. And a lot of people are trying to crack the code of how do you get not just the leader of the law firm, but the, the guy behind the scenes or the girl behind the scenes, the COO, and he has a mastermind of COOs that I think is just genius. Yeah, you know, second, he's got a program called Second in Command. Exactly. So, our, so the Blue Shark Second in Command is at that. Yeah, my, Pilma, Pilma, yeah, my, my CEO is, there, is doing it. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because he can teach you more than I can, for sure. But uh, and, 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 frankly, they te- and frankly, they teach each okay. other as well. It's yeah. a yeah. pretty big brain trust. And yeah. again, I'm digressing, but since we have time and we're amongst friends, one of the things that I have seen is I've done some higher level coaching. Um, we, I got one, one program, a CEO coaching international, which is like guys are make, make everybody in the Pilma world look like tiny players. These are guys like eight, nine figure businesses selling left and right. Like it's a different animal, but whenever they give vendor recommendations, I find them generally, I won't say off is too strong a term, but not appropriate for what we're doing in life. And that I'm sure they help some people, but they're either very expensive or very niche. And that what I really liked about the COO Alliance is it was bringing people, like-minded people together and like who solved your problems on payroll and benefits and things that are fundamental to getting through the day that yeah. aren't for the hoity-toity, but like actually have proven results to existing firms. And that, that's that been a, I think the greatest benefit is that we're getting partners in the space, both for Blue Shark and for Price Benowitz, that normally I just can't get to. You know, you see the mention of Tony Robbins and you think about the kickbacks that are going through these big organizations and instead. So I digress, but I'm, I think that's one of the huge benefits of Cameron's yeah. organization. Yeah, and like uh, as far as AI, we've we got uh, Tanner Jones going to be talking about chat GPT and how it can be used in marketing. I also have Justin Levy, who's in one of my masterminds, who is just a brilliant lawyer, but I think even more brilliant marketer. And he's always... We're going to make sure it's a husband and wife presentation. We're going to get to hear from her as well. <laughs> I don't know. He's, I don't he's know the secret that. sauce back there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah Miss Lawrence, Amy Lawrence. Yeah, it's uh, so he's using it a lot already, and so he's going to bring practical stuff that he's doing with Chat GPT and some other AI uh, apps that he's trying to really, you know. We go back, and I, I do want to say this: what Alex was saying, all this AI is not going to replace people, but here's what it's going to do: it's going to make it where you can get as much work with ten people with one person. Well, like, it's 10 times more work, maybe in five years, 100 times more productivity than you, out of one person than you did before. I just see it as a game changer. And with PI overheads going up and up, you know what I'm saying? And, and everybody's staying at a third or, you know, 40%. You've got to figure out some way or don't your margins are going down. And I think this is the answer. I mean, one of them has been outsourcing overseas, but I really think, and we'll have somebody talking about that too, at the deal at the, at the who, summit. Who, who, yeah, who's, who's speaking on that at the summit? 
the guy, the guy Legal Soft Solutions. What I can't remember his oh, name. Legal Soft, yeah. Yep, yeah, yep, they're yep, going to yep, be talking. Yep, they're yep, one yep, of our yep, sponsors. Yep. And, and look, uh, I, I got to think it's going to be a combination of all, right? So we see domestic costs and, you know, Alex, myself, on each independently on podcast talked about the cost of labor. And it's not like we're getting rid of domestic labor, right? But anything we can do that allows us to keep the precious people we have, whether it be leveraging international and or AI or, you know, and both, meeting together, both. then all of a sudden we, we are in a position you know, Alex, you know, you, I don't know how much you guys have used uh, international, but just want to get your thoughts on the intersection of layering, you know, domestic labor, international labor and, and, and AI in order to try to sort of make sure that you're getting stuff done at the most competitive price point. Because I, I know your world and your world is about, you know, getting people value to feed the Google beast at a cost effective rate. How have you done that? Um, so I've I've got a partnership with actually we're we're probably going to launch and and this is uh, between friends but it's it's eventually going to be live too starting a whole Spanish side marketing so I have a whole company and a gentleman that I've been working with for five years now that produces all of my SEO Spanish content uh, together he and I are you know it's going to actually reduce my call significantly by partnering with him and marketing that side of it. But he also does radio, TV, SEO, but I've been purchasing my Spanish content um, and working directly with him and my editors and my team. So we built our own internal team. I think we're gonna go live with it where we go full Spanish soon, but that was a, a great way for us to leverage costs, um, you know, using that outsource from Colombia and Mexico, mostly Mexico. Um, where it was uh, using those international um, that international labor for that. So that I think that was a great opportunity for us. You know, the English, um, I mean, you remember when we started this, Ken, I've known you since probably 2010 and, and Seth early on. I remember I was able to get content like a, a 500 word page for $19, right? And then it would come inside in-house and then we would spend like 50 bucks on it, right? So then we would be spending, you know, selling it for a, a certain amount. Now, the cost of content skyrocketing, um, which is why the AI comes in. I mean, I think the human intelligence is still important, but if there's a way to incorporate the AI eventually to where it gets it to the right place. And you nailed it, Seth, when you said, can we get the language of the attorney, which, which is what we've been doing with our software and creating our own internal client profiles for every client that we manage. Right is we have their database, their client profile, the words they want to use, the words that they don't want to use, all in our own internal AI before AI came out for us to create content for them. Um, I think it's just going to enhance it all, right? I, um, hopefully, you know, it, it, I don't think it'll reduce costs significantly because of the AI. I think I'm it's not, just going to- I'm not so sure. It. I think once we figure it out, not that like, it, it's just going to be, and look, who knows what, it will reduce for everybody eventually. But I'll give you an example. I'm curious because, Ken, one of the reasons I went first overseas during um, the pandemic, where I went and now have like, you know, 35, 40 people, employees for both Price Benos and Blue Shark in Latin America on top of a full domestic team, was that I was paying this huge premium for bilingual labor in the DMV, right? And the question whether you're Spanish, English, or English, Spanish. Should it matter? But this has been something, and Alex and I, I can't, I'm sure your clients or, or, or you know, partner law firms that they are part of PILMA have struggled with is, I can't tell you over the years when I hired somebody to write, this even before Blue Shark, hired somebody to write a page in Spanish, and they were all excited, and I had it edited, and it was great. And people are like, oh, yeah, yeah, that's good if you live in Colombia, but it, it's no good for Mexico. And these are the things where, theoretically, I would hope that AI is going to take us where a page of content could be individualized, where you now could speak directly to a particular population without having to write a brand new piece of content for each one. That's sort of the types of thing where you could get it to give you nuance that you're not going to... Like, I don't speak Spanish, so I couldn't do this myself, but if nothing else, be a, tr a, a checks and balances to know the different, you know, nuances between the different forms of Spanish that are out there. What are your thoughts? That'd be Alex? brilliant because Colombia alone has like seven dialects within the whole country, right? Like, right. so even that, so it's like you, you, you prompt it and say, turn this into how someone from Medellin would speak. 
I, if it could do that. Or, I mean, or better yet, you get somebody from wherever, Mexico right. or whatever. Can you turn this in? How can you sanitize it to get rid of those local nuances so that you could have, which is what's what's considered universal, like Barcelona, Spanish? No, that, so that would be uh, too... No, so what, what's like you know? To, how can you strip it of everything? I mean, Ken, you've seen people uh, and had a lot of people come to Pilma pitching Spanish-specific marketing, for example. Yeah. Um, we want to get your thoughts because, as excited as we are, we've also seen a lot of people come with not ready for prime time products that sold them and crashed and burned. How many? If we had invested in every single person doing geofencing. From the beginning yeah. of time, we would have wasted a lot of money, yeah. right? So, how do you how do you advise a law firm that wants to get and leverage this new technology without getting burnt that they're getting something because it sounds like the shiny object that they should yeah. buy? Yeah, yeah, and that's what you got to work out there. There's going to be a lot of people out there, hucksters. Yeah, what I would do. This is what I think, and I'm looking into it right now. I think every law firm should invest in a prompt engineer for AI. So you, Alex, you use that word a lot today. And that is the key to AI is knowing how to ask the questions. It's uh, if you know how to ask the question, how, and that's prompts, if you know how to write the prompts and you know your field and you know how to write the prompts, then you're a gold mine. I mean, listen, you can name your price. I really believe that to start yeah. with. I, if you're good, I mean, I, I, I looked up something. They said prompt engineers, 160, 180,000 a year. Already? Uh, oh, there's someone already marketing themselves as that. Well, but, but to be fair, so I have someone, we have nobody, a personal no, but friend. Because nobody else is raising their hand on that. Right. So, nobody's raising, but it's very brand new. Like it, you, you didn't just become a prompt engineer in the last two months, right? Since this is coming Actually, out. I, I think sadly, I, I'll just, I'll play the other side of that out. I think a lot of people did just become a prompt well, engineer. Well, we have a personal two friend, ago, a prompt not to engineer worth who's doing that exactly. And he's doing it for us. So, you know, we didn't hire him full time, right. but he's doing like, he'll, he'll be doing a whole prompt training for us, but he still hasn't got it. Like my guy, my internal content guy is not allowing any of that content to come through, no matter how much he keeps manipulating it and putting in the prompts. Cause it's still not good enough for legal. It's not, he, he did it for mortgages. He did it for like landscaping. He did it for my brother's business, but it's it's not there for legal. We know our clients. I know my lawyers. And I think eventually once we crack the code on it, I'm going to sell a tier, an AI tier, but my premium tier is still going to be human intelligence because you got to know the lawyer. You got to know how pissy he's going to get when something's incorrect. You know this, Seth. You know how many people, how many lawyers have been pissed off by one piece of content. So I and and look, and that's here. right. And look, look, that's the question, right? Because we, we could all we could I could sit with Alex on the couch right now, right? The lawyers <laughs> don't like any content. My law partner literally could rewrite his own briefs from a year ago if I put it in front of him. He wouldn't even notice and rewrite. Right, he wouldn't it. know. Right. And then the people don't look at anything, right? So they there, I guess they wouldn't care as much. But we care about Ken making sure that Google loves it because as long as Google is still king, yeah. we need to make sure and Look, this is the part I thought, and I think I'm wrong on it, but the idea that Google is going to actually have a checker to see what's AI versus not AI, but what they, they don't want care. is- They how, don't care anymore. Well, they, they care in that the last two or three years about high quality content. content. Yeah. Right. They and don't so care if it's AI they, or not. It, how is it high quality? Right. Is it high quality? And, but the problem is, like one of the, the fictions we deal with, and you've asked me this a number of times, like Seth, what, why, why should Google care if you have the same content for 20 different counties in a state? The state law is the same. We've had this conversation. So AI would be the best thing ever to replicate it for all these different locations. The problem is they're pulling out of a finite universe, whether it be, um, you know, whatever it is. So at some point, it will be repetitive. We don't feel it because we're like, wow, this is brilliant but we would feel that if you if i went to one of alex's clients and read their web page i'm like this is brilliant you still can't copy it onto your site so it's first getting it good enough and then second having the assumption that the universe is, so pictures right everybody's all excited we can make ken beautiful uh, uh, ken could be a ken doll but 
if if they're pulling the the graphic images to to make the new Ken off of trademarked or copyrighted material, that's yeah. a whole other world that we have to we're about to step into. Yeah. No, I agree with you. Man, great. We can talk about this all day long. Well, I'm super stoked for May. I forgot it was like right around the corner for us to be in New Orleans together. We were just together at Mass Torch Made Perfect last week, had a great lunch, great conversation, which is what uh, pivoted us prompted to this. doing yeah. and prompted this uh, call, which is great. I think we should do more of these. I think the combination of three different perspectives is absolutely intelligent for all the lawyers, for any other marketers that are out there. Um, we'd love to have more conversations, but I, I'm, I'm stoked, man. New Orleans, and I got to give it to you, Ken, since 2010, you've been an integral part of the relationship with our company and us gaining clients, um, vendors out there. If you have not signed up for Pelma, this is a conference that, and even if you're not a vendor, if you go and, and, and pay the price as a lawyer, uh, one of the mastermind, whatever angle you take to attend Pilma. It is going to be your stepping stone to the next one, and and I'm gonna and I'm gonna call call out all the masterminds who are out there. My first mastermind was Ben Glass. Shortly after Ben Glass, my boy Ken Hardison. Ken Hardison launched all these different masterminds that now one lawyer has, another lawyer has, another lawyer has over here. All of them started from this dude. He was the root. They all created branches from it. If you want to learn and get into a group of people and, and start launching yourself, call my boy. Uh, and I'm going to be much more superficial because I've, I've been to the, the, I've been a Pilma groupie since, uh, since Atlanta, but uh, which is goes back to right around two, 2010, I think the second, second ish Pilma, yeah. but you know, to be able to get with this many smart people and you walk around the room and you, you'll see guys that are like, you know, hundred million dollar firms, multi hundred million dollar firms walking with guys who just started uh, the sharing in there and the openness. Great. Ritz Carlton in New Orleans for a couple hundred dollars a night. You, you still have rooms left. Yeah. Yeah. It, uh, to me, if you know, I love that you got the whole hotel. Yeah. The first time we ever did it, but we right. decided but, to go for it. I mean, to be in, in New Orleans with the, the hotel itself is this just gorgeous place with amazing yeah. gumbo great learning and sharing the oysters uh, you gotta have the oysters and, 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 and to me like the the pilma as a home as a home base for people you know for people like myself who don't want to be in court and who want to build our business most places you go and it's like a track or a class but the idea that you get nothing but the best and brightest thinking and working on how to build your firm up to me it's always been a gift Thank you guys are way too kind, but I appreciate it. But we do <laughs> try to give value. We try to give value. And, uh, you know, I will, I will brag about one thing. We've had a money back guarantee since 2009. Anybody goes to the seventh after the first day, I'll give them their money back. Plus it used to be five and that's thousand documented travel costs. And I've never had nobody ask for the money back in 14 years. Well, 13, yeah, 14 years. This will be the 15th year. Wow. So yeah. 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 Well, we, we can't wait to be there. A lot of, a lot of, look, it would be all the fundamentals that are there. But what I love about this year is it's going to be forward facing and thinking about what's next Yeah. because every law firm needs to be there. And again, it's not like it, it, it is not like if you're not there right now, it's too late. It's, we're just at the infancy. You know, I, I remember being part of the early dot com bubble and to think about what was going on in the, the mid to later 90s compared to now. Uh, it's just yeah. remarkable. So, Let's yeah. let's make sure we strike while the iron's hot. Well, thank you very much, Ken and uh, Alex. Yeah, uh, thank you. Awesome. I hope this is the first of many, but it's a lot of fun having all this brain power on one podcast and syndicating it out through all these amazing channels. All right, my friends. Y'all have you. a good day. Very good. Have we'll see, it. We'll see you at the summit. All right. See you there.